Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In earlier videos, we looked at the upcoming destination page, the primary data link track, the completion of offset endpoints, and visual initial and reference points. In this Viper update video, we'll touch on some of the other changes coming to the Viper. Uh, some of these will be in the next update, but some may come a little bit later. All right, so the first thing we're gonna take a look at are some changes to the symbology on the fire control radar or FCR and the horizontal situation display or the HSD. And the first big rule is that if your radar can see the contact, the symbol will always be solid, even if another data link source can see it. Whereas if your radar does not see the contact and you only know it's there based on a data link, it will be hollow or unfilled. And we can see an example of that on the FCR right now. So on the left side, we have a couple of friendly contacts in green. The near one is uh, solid, indicating that a radar sees the lead, whereas the guy in trail and off to left is hollow or unfilled. And uh, that's because our radar does not see this contact and we only know he is there based on data link. If we move the scan pattern off both, it'll take a few seconds, but we'll see that the lead friendly contact will go unfilled here in a second because our radar is no longer seeing him. Okay, change scale. Let's uh, lock up this uh, lead unknown. And because he is unknown, he is white. You know, other colors would be yellow if it's ambiguous. Uh, red, of course, if it is a confirmed hostile based on a rules of engagement matrix. We could also, of course, do an identify friend or foe. Let's do a line of sight AIF, AIFF on him. Came back negative. But because, at least in this year of the Viper, uh, there is no correlation between an AIFF scan and the fire control radar, it will not change. It'll still be an unknown. Next, if we go down here to the HUD control panel, we now have all three of the airspeed selections on the HUD. So, of course, we have calibrated first, and that appears as a C. We've had that forever. Then we can go to true airspeed tasks, and that select will have a T. And then finally, one more time, we have ground speed, and that's going to appear as a G. And this is important when we go to the uh, cruise page uh, soon, whereas uh, the cruise page is going to be using ground speed. Next, let's uh, get out of air to air. We'll go to air to ground. Let's bring up some Mark 82s and go to control page. We can see we have new fusing options. So this is a big area of growth for us that we're going to be working on uh, hard over the next year. Uh, right now we're in a C1. You'll see we have, we have AD at two seconds and AD2 at zero seconds. AD is the uh, fuse arming delay once the weapon comes off the jet. So once you pick up that weapon, uh, two seconds later it will arm itself. Below it, AD2 is the delay after weapon impact that that weapon will detonate. So if we wanted to edit these, we're going to go ahead and select the OSB next to C1. We have 80 on top, 82 on the bottom. We'll hit enter to go to 82. And let's set this to six seconds, six, zero, zero, and enter. So now, once I've released the weapon, two seconds later, it will arm. Once it impacts the ground, six seconds later, it will detonate. Let's go to the uh, targeting pod. I'm gonna turn off the radar. We'll see here, that when the targeting pod and the FCR are powered off, we now still have the cursor zero options on both. Let's go back to the store's management page or SMIS. We go to Mavericks. Now what we can do is by pressing the cursor enable button, we can cycle between visual, uh, boresight, and pre-plant. So rather than having hit that OSB, you can just do it on the hot test now. Anyhow, folks, uh, these are the uh, more major changes coming to the update. There could be many more, of course, but you can find those in the upcoming changelog. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.